My name is Rainy Rogers and today we're going to do a vignette of a horse head, which happens to be my pet princess, in watercolor. So I'd like to kind of tell you how I get this started so that you can catch up with me to where I am now. Um, at this point I have a 140 pound uh, Kilimanjaro paper and I have got it, it's about 11 by 14 I think is what the size is and I'm taping the edges down so that we can have a nice clean edge when we're finished with the piece but that just keeps the paper from buckling because we're not going to pre-wet it. I'm sure you've had, heard lots of times about pre-wetting paper but for larger sheets that's, that's generally what you would do. For a small sheet you really don't have to worry about that. So I've got this all taped down on my foam core board which is a wonderful support because it's very light and very sturdy. And here's the photograph that I'm going to be working from and this is a picture that I took myself of, of my horse and it's always good to paint something that you're familiar with. Your subject matter should be something that you that you really enjoy and and are familiar with because that will be reflected in the piece that you finish doing actually. So I've already sketched this out with pencil kind of to save us a little bit of time today but when I do a sketch, when I sketch it out, I use, I pay a whole lot of attention to my negative space because that will give you a good uh, sense of where your line goes. And I do kind of use a pencil for reference as to whether I've got a vertical line or a horizontal line and then anything in between is going to be something that you really need to take pay attention to because that's going to show you the line of the of the, the skull, the head, the forehead, all the way down to the nose, etc. Um, in portrait painting you want to be very very specific about that because that really helps with all the, the nuances in a face. It's the same thing with an animal. It's like portrait painting um, but you're working with animals. You're not painting skin and hair, you're painting fur and feathers and um, so, so that's, you just need to know how to, how to paint those things and, and get real familiar with that. You want to get the, the basic shape sketched out and when you're looking at your subject you also want to kind of um, squint your eyes down so you can get the basic larger shapes too because that's what you're going to be looking at. Not going for detail right away, you want to build up to the detail. Go with the larger, larger shapes first. Uh, let me bring you over here to my palette. Uh, I keep a pretty simple palette. Uh, I like warms and cools of all, the, of all the colors. I've got a sky blue. I have a cobalt blue, um, which is a little cooler, of course, than the sky blue. That's going to be warm. I like a warm and a cool. When you, when, when you mix a warm and a cool of the same hue, you get kind of a, what they call an octanic color, which is a very bright, very brilliant color that you really can't get in a tube. Um, this is an ultramarine blue, great standby because it can be mixed with a lot of these colors to create good blacks. Um, I have a titanium white, and all these are American Journey watercolors. I have an earthen green, no I'm sorry, this is a hooker's green. I have a, a permanent green, and I have an earthen green here, which is always good when you're doing wildlife or, or animals. You want, you're going to be painting them, chances are, in a natural environment so you want to keep your colors kind of natural. Maybe a little more grayed down than you would in um, say an abstract. Uh, this is a peach, peachy keen. This is a poppy color or uh, actually this is a cadmium red. This is a burnt sienna and then we have a burnt umber. And those are basically all the colors that you're going to need to, to to do what we're doing here. Of course there are a bazillion other kinds of colors that you can choose from but at this point we really don't need to get that that involved. Um, my brushes are, I guess my favorite brush is a number 12. This is a cheap, cheap Joe's. I think it's a dragon's tongue. I use this one quite a bit. I also use the, um, here's a sable that's a, a number 12 sable that's a little bit longer on a point and then it goes on down to some rounds. I've got a number three. It's a Robert Simmons brush. Got another Robert Simmons. I have two threes. I must like those a lot. And, um, and that's really good to have. There's nothing wrong with having two or one or more of the same size brush because you might be having, using them in different colors. But that's just basically the, the, the brushes that I like to use for something like this size. Now, when I start on an animal, you are painting something that is living. So, um, and the eyes are the windows to the soul. So 
I always kind of go into the eye first because I think that's real important. If you get the eye right, then the rest of the horse just kind of evolves from that. You've already gotten into the soul of the animal and the rest just sort of emerges. So what we'll do is go ahead and state this eye. As I said, I've already kind of got the basics. And as you see in the sketching that I've done, it's very quick, very loose, but I've kind of um, indicated where some of the dark areas are going to be on the horse, where the indentations are down uh, the side of the, of the head, where the skull goes in, um, where the nose area, all the way down to the actual, the soft muzzle of, of the horse. You don't have to know what the different parts of an animal are, just, just see it, just feel it, just squint it down, see where the darks and lights are, and let it all kind of evolve. Um, another thing that I do, which can help, uh, with that, with sketching out, is, is to turn the piece upside down. And when you're turning it upside down, you're looking at angles and you're looking at shapes much more than you are uh, a neck, a nose, a muzzle, an eye, and, and that's a really good thing too. So while I have this upside down, I'm going to just kind of double check some things about my, my drawing and make a few little changes here because I can see so much more this way than I can when it's when it's right side up and that's the whole right brain left brain thing um, the left side of the brain is going to tell you what it is the right side is going to tell you that it just looks really good it doesn't really care what it does um, but you can see so much more of the folds of the skin and uh, just with it upside down is a real quick way to do that um, so I'm just going to kind of make some corrections here. The eye, I want to go into a little bit more here. Just going to kind of get in there, double check, come down here. When you do the eye of whatever animal it is you're painting, then you, you really are getting to the essence of the animal. And uh, if you do a really good job, you can just sort of start talking to it and talk your way through the through the rest of your painting. Okay, that's going to work for now. Um, when I have this particular picture upside down, I'm actually seeing it much more clearly than I am when it's right side up. So for the eye, I'm going to keep it upside down. I have no black in my palette because I don't really use black. Black is a good ace in the hole if you really need something that's going to be really, really dark. The black can have a tendency to be a little dead. Lamp black is a really good black to use. But instead of a black, I'm going to pick up my ultramarine blue and lots of paper towels and I'm going to come over here and get some of the burnt umber and I'm going to mix it in. Now the, there are some areas that that are black and that's the corners of the mouths, the nostrils and the pupils. Um, the horse, this horse's eye is very dark anyway so I'm going to actually start off with a little more brown because they have these great big brown eyes. And I'm just going to come right on in here and uh, start stating the eye. Give me a little more water. The thing about watercolor is it's watercolor. And so you need to use water. Use as much as you need. Okay, so while that's still a little bit wet, let me go in here. I'm just going to kind of state the pupil part of the eye because it's all going to blend in. It is not going to be terribly distinguishable where the pupil is. Now while I'm working on that, I'm going to kind of mix some of this uh, the darker black sort of color and then the, the burnt sienna and I'm going to start painting around the outside of the eye and because I know this animal and while even while I'm painting this I can almost I can just kind of um, feel her or hear the sounds that she makes and so it's kind of neat just her personality because I know it just sort of starts to come out. Now I'm going to just going to kind of daub back into that pupil area. It's still wet, so it's all going to blend itself. And that, once again, is more beauty of watercolor, is that 
that it can you can let it blend itself or you can take the the time to to blend it with a brush all right I'm going to kind of leave that there um, now what I'm going to do while we're going we're going to let that eye just sort of dry a little bit at this point I'm going to flip it back up I'm going to get my larger brush I think I'm going to go for the 12 the number 12 this is a Grumbacher, a Grumbacher number 12 come on over here to some of this burnt sienna and I'm going to start to wash I do want to account for the for the white area white space on here and I'm just going to go ahead and lay in a nice wash over all of this now as you can say as I'm going down the blaze on her nose my strokes are are not real smooth like this I'm actually kind of already allowing for the the way the hair grows on a horse's uh, on the forehead area so I'm gonna just start washing it all the way up to here and we've got this hair of course the mane that's coming around here we're not really going to worry about that yet we can put that in later just going to go ahead and cover the whole area with the color feel free to jump into the wash add a little more color if you want just going to kind of, and this will also help to state some of those um, shades that are near the eye that are um, there's no point in mixing them because we'll, with the glazes that we put on that'll take care of it and what makes the eye of course is when you put that catch light that's what really gives it that final sense of being round and wet so just going to go ahead now actually where the mane comes in down here um, I can kind of go around the general shape of that because that is going to be darker and I can just and got a little light back here I just happened to see so I'm going to throw a little bit of red right on the back of the horse you can have a little bit of leeway when you're painting animals you want to be as accurate as possible but you also want to have fun with it so um, putting a little bit of red on the back sounds a little odd but actually it works out just well just fine when you're comparing it to the to the lighting etc okay so I'm going to continue to lay this wash on and then the more of the wash you get on, of course, the more every stroke you make, the animal that you're painting is going to start to kind of come, come to life. And I do believe that the stroke is the object. That's one of the um, properties of painting that really seems to hold true. So if you want to keep it, and a horse's hair is very, very short. It's very, very sleek. So there's not much indication at this point of, of hair, so to speak. So we're really not going to, on the, the horse, but the body of the horse itself, there's not really that much indication of hair. There's going to be a lot more modeling of what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit more of this ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna. I think I'm going to go ahead and indicate some of this mane that we have here, just a little bit. Some of the darker areas of the mane. Now, to find the darker areas in the animal or also in the, in the landscape, because if you're going to paint animals, you need to know about landscape painting too, which would be a whole other thing. But the way to do that is to squint it down, is to really squint your eyes and kind of scatter vision is what some people call it. And, um, so that you're not uh, uh, confused by the, de the detail of the whatever it is you're painting, but that you're more consumed with, with the general hue and the shadow and the light. And then you can come in and you can open your eyes more fully and um, then ascertain and assess how you're going to paint the other elements.
but simplicity is key. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go in. I'm squinting it down, and I'm just going to put some dark in this mane. I'm going to go ahead and work it down in here. Now, the darks are going to show you the shadow areas of the mane, and they're going to show you how the, the hair on the mane is falling. Just kind of give you an idea of the texture of the mane, but that's what darks will do. Just give you more of the detail. So I'm going to reach in here and get some more of the same color. And you can see how black that is, or how dark it is. And I'm just going to kind of fill this in. It's like already it's starting to come to life. That's one of the things that I really enjoy about doing wildlife is that you feel like you're not alone in the room. You have another living being, and as soon as you get that catch light in especially, it really just makes a big difference. I'm just going to come over here and just add a little dark there. Um, okay, now for the rest of this, I'm just going to kind of model this in a little bit. We'll come back in later. Once you get that first coat of paint on the piece, then the other coats will kind of come in. It allows also the first coat to sort of dry some. It's really wonderful because you're going to get nice soft edges now. Um, painting pets or animals, uh, really you need to have, it's nice to have more definition. So at this early stage you can get nice soft shadows and that's always nice because you're going to come in and you're going to really sharpen those up. So I'll go around the ear, just kind of get that basic thing, the shapes. Don't even know what they are. Don't try to figure out what they are. Just look at the shapes. Everything from the most minutia of change in, in shade to, uh, to the larger pieces. Um, okay, so we got, and everything you do, it's a comparison. No matter what you're painting, it's always a comparison.